speed is undeniably an important factor to consider in the development of any fighter jet. To achieve this, the aviation industry has worked tirelessly round the clock to develop an aircraft that would have unrivaled capabilities and still fly at a speed that exceeds that of light. After developing several fighter jets that have broken the speed threshold, the United States has once again raised the standard with the creation of the world's first hypersonic fighter jet. How fast can this aircraft fly when airborne? How efficient is this fighter in warfare? Join us as we explore the first hypersonic aircraft that is being tested by the United States Air Force. For ages, aircraft used by the military have evolved from being slow and big to stealthy and extremely fast, but recently, the features needed in fighter jets have changed and new capabilities are needed by the Air Force. As a response to the shift in the concept of warfare, aviation industries all over the world have been working non-stop to develop an aircraft which can fly faster than the speed of light, at hypersonic speed, and also have the ability to carry powerful and lethal weapons to war zones. Well, while other nations have failed to develop one, the United States has proven it's as the only nation at the forefront of technological development and has made headway in the creation of such a formidable aircraft. And guess what? It is not doing it alone. The U.S. started this journey with a startup out in Atlanta, Georgia, and this collaboration has led to the development of the Quarter Horse. This newly developed aircraft is unlike any other fighter jet that has been created, and according to the United States, it is a military breakthrough. This next generation fighter jet boasts hypersonic speed, and it is common knowledge in the aviation industry that with more speed comes power, which makes such a weapon a force to reckon with on the battleground. This innovation begins with the Quarter Horse, which is a small aircraft which is about 40 meters long. This aircraft is not propelled by the regular engine that can be found in every other aircraft. Instead, it makes use of Hermes's futuristic engine, known as the Chimera. Since the Quarter Horse is powered by this engine, it has the ability to fly faster than any other aircraft that has ever graced any runway. It even beats the speed record that has been set by the renowned SR-71 Blackbird, one of the fastest fighter jets ever created. The Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird is a very fast aircraft that was used for spying. It was capable of flying higher than other aircrafts and can go faster than three times the speed of sound. It was first shown to the public in 1964 and used by the U.S. Air Force starting in 1966. It was retired in 1989 because of politics, but brought back for a short time in the 1990s. This aircraft had special equipment for spying, like cameras and radar. It flew very high and very fast, so it could avoid enemy attacks. If it was threatened, it could speed up and escape. After it retired, satellites and drones took over its spying duties. A new drone called the SR-72 is being developed by Lockheed Martin and is expected to fly in 2025. Even though the SR-71 retired long ago, it used to hold the record for the fastest manned aircraft, which it set in 1976. But this new hypersonic aircraft has effectively taken its place. However, every part of creating the SR-72 showed how smart and determined people can be. They designed really good engines and materials that could handle the extreme conditions of super-fast flight. When it starts flying, it sounds like a turbine engine humming. But once it goes super-fast, it's powered by a special engine called a ramjet. This engine gives it the power to fly at super-high speeds. This aircraft can do lots of different things which includes flying really fast to get important information quickly. It is also really good at hitting targets precisely with missiles. But guess what? Despite these impressive attributes, the quarter horse powered by the Camara stands to beat all these capabilities. In January 2023, Hermes finished the first step in making a hypersonic quarter horse. They performed many tests that started late in 2023. 
These tests stand to check the quarter horse's performance on the ground by making use of a special rig called Dynamic Iron Bird. This rig works by checking if all the parts work well together. This step in making the aircraft just tests how it works on the ground. The developers also made use of something called the Quarter Horse, MKO, for the other tests performed on this hypersonic aircrafts. It had only the most important parts needed for testing. Despite being cheap, it was still good enough to test everything. These tests were performed at the Air Force's place in Tennessee called Arnold Engineering Development Complex. Hermes chose this place so that they could work directly with the Air Force. The Air Force has been a strong force that has supported Hermes's growth over the years. In August 2021, the company received a $1.5 million contract from the Air Force to develop their proposed aircraft as a possible Air Force One that transports the U.S. President in the future. In August 2021, a jointly funded Air Force contract made sure that Hermes received another $60 million in funding. Hermes is in the process of developing the Quarter Horse as a developmental system for a military jet called Dark Horse. After completing the Dark Horse project, the company will develop the Hauson, a supersonic commercial airline. Hauson will be the completion of Hermes's original dream, which is commercial flight for civilians. Right now, Hermes still needs to make two more aircraft before they can reach their major goal. However, they are still busy with the process of making the Quarter Horse. The Quarter Horse MKO, which they used in the recent tests, did a good job checking if all the parts worked together. Its main function was to make sure the systems are okay, controlling the aircraft from far away, moving on the ground, and checking how people can control it while flying. Now that MKO tests went well, they're moving on to MK1. MK1 will be the first one to fly. They'll try it out for taking off and landing from far away, but they won't try flying really fast with it yet. They're already making it, and it should fly later this year. After that, they'll work on MK2, which will go really fast, but not as fast as MK3. MK3 will be the fastest, breaking the record held by the SR-71. The development of Hermes is not just about breaking records or being at the forefront of technological advancement, but even more. Before the SR-71 Blackbird got retired, the U.S. Air Force used to rely on the fact that it is extremely fast to outperform other rival countries like Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, and others who want to be the best in the world. Now, the U.S. is in urgent need of speed again. The Blackbird could fly really, really fast and for a very long time, high up in the sky. Because it was so fast and flew so high, it was able to protect itself from over 4,000 missiles during its three decades of service. No one ever shot it down. It was not equipped with any weapons because it did not need one. If someone fired at it, it could just speed up and leave the missiles behind. However, this aircraft retired in 1999, and with it went the Air Force's amazing ability to beat any threat. But even if the SR-70 was still flying today, it wouldn't be fast enough to dodge today's threats and this was the very reason for the development of another hypersonic aircraft. In addition to this new innovation, the aviation in Atlanta revealed a long-term contract on November 13th. Although some information concerning the terms of the contract was not revealed, such as how many years the contract covers, it was only mentioned that the company was getting $23 million for the first year. It was also stated that this multi-year deal will allow them to keep improving their technology and developing aircraft. The contract will focus on showing how well their technology works for hypersonic aircraft in real situations. They will also work on important things like engines, keeping the fighter jets stealthy, generating power, and making sure the aircraft can perform its job effectively. The contract is part of a program called HiCat, run by the DIU. This program aims to use commercial technology to help the Defense Department test hypersonic flights more often. Also, the Pentagon is working on over 70 different projects to develop weapons and fighter jets that can go really fast, faster than Mach 5. But, unfortunately, there aren't enough tools and resources to test them all. This means they can't do as many tests as they'd like to check how well these systems work. 
Before this, the DIU gave contracts to companies like Hypersonic from Australia and Rocket Lab and Fenix Space from California for the HiCat program. Hypersonics is expected to test their Dart AE platform next summer, while Rocket Lab's Hasta vehicle will help with suborbital launches. GE Aerospace will also develop a test bed that's cheaper to launch from aircrafts. Barry Kirkendell, the technical director of DIU's space portfolio, said in a statement on November 13 that these current and future commercial capabilities offer the Defense Department cost-effective ways to do tests more often using the best technology available now and in the future. Hermes plans for Quarter Horse to have its first flight in 2024. This test plane will use the Chimera engine, which is based on General Electric's J85 turbojet system. Partnering with DIU and other defense agencies gives opportunities to test their technology and validate their ideas. This not only helps them improve Quarter Horse and Chimera, but also supports their work on another vehicle called Dark Horse. Hermes CEO AJ Piplica mentioned in a statement that they were excited to use Quarter Horse for high-speed flight tests and to use what they have learned to improve the Dark Horse. He also stated that the contract is an important part of the plan they have to develop hypersonic aircraft in the future. DIU is planning a second part of the program called HiCat 2. They want to work with companies to add different things to the test vehicles, like special equipment for navigation and communication, new manufacturing methods, and cheaper materials. They have also teamed up with a company called Enxtrack in California to help with guidance, navigation, and control for HiCat 2. However, in nations around the world, particularly Russia and China, hypersonic missiles have been developed. While the United States is also working on the development of its own hypersonic missiles, those of Russia and China are renowned for being far ahead in terms of development. They are already in service. Russia's Kok 47 M2 Kinjal, also known as the Dagger, is a super-fast missile that Russia launches from jets. It can fly really far, around 460 to 480 kilometers, and super-fast, up to Mach 10. This missile can carry different kinds of warheads, including regular and nuclear ones. It can also be launched from 222 M3 bombers, or Meiji 31K interceptors, and now even from modified Su-34 jets after the Ukraine war. It's the first super-fast weapon ever used. These missiles are now placed at air bases in certain parts of Russia. They started being used in December 2017 and were shown off by Russian President Vladimir Putin on March 2018 as part of new weapons for Russia. On March 18, 2022, one month after the Russo-Ukraine war began and a Kinjal missile struck Ukraine, the Zircon entered service. It is even more modern and more advanced than the Kinjal. The winged, maneuverable missile with a lift-generating center body has an air-breathing design. Here, a booster stage with solid fuel engines accelerates the missile to supersonic speeds after which a scramjet motor with liquid fuel accelerates to a peak altitude of 92,000 feet and hypersonic speeds up to Mach 9. On impact, the Zircon strikes its target with 4,700 pounds of TNT. On February 7 last month, a Zircon missile struck a building in Ukraine. The damage was devastating. The missile's basic design is similar to an older one called the 9K-7 Iskander missile, which is usually launched from the ground. They made some changes to make it work for launching from aircrafts, like adjusting the guidance system. It's said to be able to hit both still things and moving targets like aircraft carriers. Because the Kinjal moves really fast, it can get through to its target better than slower, lighter missiles. Some news in Russia makes a big deal about the hypersonic feature, saying it's super advanced. But really, the Kinjal uses pretty standard technology for ballistic missiles, just going faster. The term hypersonic isn't as special as they make it sound. Russian media mentioned that the missile could travel about 2,000 kilometers when launched from one kind of plane and about 3,000 kilometers from another, but that includes the distance the plane can travel itself. 
When the missile is flying on its own, it can go about 460 to 480 kilometers, which is similar to the Iskander missile it's based on. Each Kinjal missile costs around $10 million. The Kinjal missile became operational on December 2017, and it was one of six new weapons shown off by Russian President Vladimir Putin on March 2018. They put Kinjal missiles on different planes like the MiG-31K, 2160M, 222M-3M, and Su-34. On May 2018, 10 MiG-31K planes that could use Kinzhal missiles were ready to go. By December 2018, aircrafts with Kinzhal missiles had done 89 missions over the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. By February 2019, the crews of MiG-31K planes had trained over 380 times with the Kinzhal missile, with at least 70 times using mid-air refueling. The missile was first shown to the public during an international contest in August 2019. According to reports, the first Kinjal missile launch in the Arctic happened in mid-November 2019. It was launched from a MiG-31K plane from Olenya Air Base and hit a target on the ground at Pemboy Proving Ground, going at Mach 10. In June 2021, another Kinzhal missile was launched from a MiG-31K plane from Kamemim Air Base in Syria. Later on, a special group of aircrafts with Kinjal missiles was formed. Rumors in early February 2022 said that some MiG-31 planes with Kinjal missiles were moved from Soltsy Air Base to Chernyakovsk Naval Air Base in Russia's western Kaliningrad region. On February 19, 2022, Russia's aerospace force launched Kinjal missiles. Vladimir Putin told the Russian aerospace forces to start flying over the Black Sea region regularly with MiG-31K planes armed with Kinjal missiles starting from October 18, 2023. It's said that these missiles can change targets while flying. Moving on to China's Dongfeng-17, this missile, also known as DF-17, can carry a super-fast gleader called DF-ZAF. It's a type of missile that travels on roads and uses solid fuel. It likely started being used around the middle of 2019. It's the first missile like this to be used in real missions. It was built using parts from another Chinese missile called DF-16B, which is used for short distances. It's harder for defense systems to stop the DF-ZF because it can move around a lot, unlike regular missiles that follow a more predictable path. This missile might be used to attack air and missile defenses before other weapons are used. Some Chinese experts say the DFZF has a regular explosive warhead, but American intelligence thinks it might also be able to carry nuclear weapons. It is carried on a large military truck with 10 wheels. The missile is put on top of the truck and raised up straight to be ready for firing. The DF-17 is a type of missile that uses solid fuel and can travel a medium distance. It carries a special super-fast glider called the DF-ZF. This missile can carry different kinds of warheads, including regular and nuclear ones, and can go up to 2,000 kilometers or more. It goes really fast, reaching speeds of Mach 5, which is considered hypersonic. It's about 11 meters long and weighs around 15,000 kilograms. It's very accurate, with only a few meters of possible error. It is transported on a special military truck that has 10 wheels. It has a crew cabin in the front, where people can ride. It's powered by a strong engine, and can go as fast as 70 kilometers per hour. It can travel up to 650 kilometers without needing more fuel. The missile is designed in such a way which makes it counter enemy defenses. Its special glider technology lets it fly really low right before it hits its target, making it hard to stop. During tests, it showed it can hit targets very accurately, within just a few meters. Each DF-17 unit can launch missiles on its own, without needing help from other places. Similarly, the YJ-83 is a Chinese subsonic anti-ship cruise missile that was manufactured by the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, 3rd Academy. 
This missile uses small computers and a compact guidance system to travel up to 180 kilometers at a speed of Mach 0.9. It's powered by a Chinese engine and carries a warhead weighing 190 kilograms. The missile uses radar to guide itself to the target. An air-launched version, called the YJ-83K, has a range of 180 kilometers, travels at Mach 0.9, and carries a warhead weighing 165 kilograms. An upgraded version, the YJ-83KH, uses an infrared seeker and has a range of 230 kilometers. It can also be guided remotely. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.